Time now for perspective and vaccines have been credited with reducing some of the world's most deadly diseases. But while the market for vaccinations has tripled since the turn of the century, representing over 25 billion US dollars a year and is expected to continue to rise rapidly, questions over the safety and effectiveness of many of them remain. As new diseases develop or mutate, the speed with, such, with which some injections are produced has also been a source of question, while well, with fear comes rejection which is also said to result in some unfavourable outcomes. The number of measles infections last year in the European Union, three times what it was in 2016. Motiv notably, authorities said, because people decided not to get immunised. So how can one know whether or not to get those jabs? Well, today we're joined by the medical director of a clinic that specialises in vaccinations for babies. Joining us live from London to give us his view is Dr Richard Halverson. Uh, thanks so much for your time, Dr Halverson. Now, you run a vaccination clinic that... You know, and according to your book, you're not at all anti-vaccinations, but you do feel sometimes there's an exaggeration over the good they can do. But is there a danger to vaccinations? I'm very concerned, Eve, about the direction that we're going with vaccinations at the moment. We're adding more and more vaccines to our schedules. Often in some countries, they're becoming compulsory, as I believe that is the case in France. And some of these diseases we're vaccinated against now actually are really very mild or almost impossible to contract. Let's be clear, vaccines can save lives. There's no question about that. But also all vaccines have side effects. And the side effects of vaccines has unfortunately been downplayed by the establishment in order to encourage and promote uptake. Now that has led some parents quite understandably to question the benefit of the vaccines. And then we've got other extremes where parents are saying that vaccines are the cause of all evil. The truth is that vaccines offer benefit, but some vaccines offer more benefit than others. We, we pool them all together. And if you go to your doctor, you'll be told, well, you must have all these vaccines. These are essential for your child. Otherwise you're putting your child at risk. That's not quite true. There are some vaccines that are clearly of benefit and other vaccines that are not of benefit and they need to be they need to be distinguished and we need to look between them. And before we get into maybe distinguish them slightly, Dr. Sorry, Halverson, was... you know, what do you, what are the types of side effects? Like, are they really significant side effects or, you know, is it better to, to take that rather than getting the risk of many diseases? Well, that again, that again depends on the vaccine. Some vaccine, the benefit outweighs the risk and some vaccines, in my view, the risks clearly outweigh the benefits. Now, all vaccines have side effects, like any medicine. Anytime you take a tablet or a drug or a vaccine, there's the risk of side effects. And occasionally that risk is severe. The side effects, severe side effects can happen. Governments wouldn't have vaccine damage injury compensation programs if they didn't acknowledge that there was a real risk of serious side effects, albeit rare. There is an additional problem is that we're very uncertain about the long-term effects of vaccines. They have a profound effect on the immune system and we're adding more and more and more to the schedule. And we know that vaccines can cause autoimmune diseases. We know that vaccines can cause allergies. We don't know what sort of problems they may be building up for the future. And so we should be more cautious when we add more and more vaccines to the schedule for diseases that are, are less important. Indeed, as you say, medication in general. Now, one vaccination that seems to be becoming increasingly uh, common over the years is the flu vaccination. Now, the European Centre for D Disease Control estimates that around 40,000 people a year in Europe die from the flu. Uh, they say that is in part, at least, a large part due to low vaccine coverage. Do you think the vaccination for the flu then is a useful one? And, you know, sh should it be more or less automatic for us? It's, it's very difficult when we gauge deaths from flu um, because it depends entirely how you, how you assess it, whether the flu was actually the cause or whether the flu was just the trigger on top of serious underlying diseases. So many people who die from flu are already very seriously ill and the, the, the flu is just the straw that breaks the camel's back. So one has to take all these figures with a pinch of salt. As far as the flu vaccine goes, and I'm an expert in children's vaccinations, so I'm gonna talk about children. As far as flu vaccinations go, very, there is very little risk of flu to children. And I think the benefit of giving children the flu vaccine every year, which is what certainly is now encouraged in the UK, is very questionable. Let's go back a few years to 
the swine flu outbreak that we had about seven years ago. You may remember there was this huge pandemic and, and the whole world got into, a, got into a panic about swine flu. We rushed out this vaccine on the market. It has since been found that the vaccine that was introduced actually did more harm than good. Lots of children got narcolepsy, a very serious debilitating disease, because of that vaccine. And in fact, more children got narcolepsy because of the swine flu vaccine than died from flu. So that was a case where the vaccine mm -hmm. did more harm than good. So again, we mm -hmm. need to be cautious. But then, Dr. Halverson, you know, who can people trust? Because at the same time, uh, the measles vaccine, uh, for example, that's also one that comes under question all the time. And yet, because people are taking less of it, we're now being told that that disease, which can also, you know, lead to brain damage, it can be fatal, that that's making a, a bit of a comeback. Measles is making a comeback. Measles is, 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 is an interesting one. The, um, uh, the, the, the risk of measles is actually exaggerated. Um, I'm not saying we shouldn't vaccinate. I think there is a case for vaccination against measles because uh, measles can be serious, though it is rarely serious in healthy children. When I was young, we all caught measles um, and we didn't actually live in, in fear of it, though I quite agree that measles can be dangerous, again, usually in children with serious underlying health problems. Interestingly as well, measles also has benefits. If you contract measles as a child, providing you get through it healthily, of course, the risks of allergies is reduced, the risk of asthma is reduced, even the risk of some childhood cancers such as lymphoma and leukemia is reduced. This is, this is good science. This is published scientific papers. So I'm not saying we shouldn't vaccinate, but we should just have a debate about the benefits and the risks. But it's not as clear cut as some people believe. So, Dr. Halverson, very briefly, it comes down to, it sounds like, uh, deciding that benefit versus the risk of all medication. You know, what can pe how can people themselves make that decision? You know, do they just have to trust their GP? You know, what information might they be able to look for? I think it's, it, it's, it's a big problem and it's very disappointing that we don't seem to be have, able to have the sort of debate, the discussion that we're having now here, Eve, um, out in the public. You go to your GP and they're told you just must have the vaccine. The very purpose of my clinic, which I'm not trying to promote, but the purpose of it um, is to offer parents the opportunity to have that rational discussion, to choose which vaccines to give, to maybe miss out a couple that are less important, and maybe to give others in, in a slightly more spaced out way, to give them the opportunity to do that. It is difficult. Um, again, without trying to blow my own trumpet, I have written a book which, is, which I, I've tried to make very balanced. It's not pro-vaccine, it's not anti-vaccine, mm. but it does... does, does ask some of these questions that we're asking and that I've tried to put that in a balanced way as well. Okay, well, Dr. Halverson, there is so much more that could be debated, but we're going to have to leave it at that. Thanks so much for joining us live from London. Dr. Richard Halverson there, a medical director of Baby Jabs in London. Quick